What's up everybody, Trophy B, this is Texas. I am still currently at work. And I was like, you know what? Uh, I've got a little bit of downtime for lunch. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, I've recorded this video about three times, right? Three separate times. And the reason I, I've done it a few times, okay, the reason I've done it more than once, all right, the reason I've recorded this video more than one time is because it's a lot to cover and I'm trying to make the video as short and concise as possible. Okay. So let me get all my disclosures out of the way. First disclosure, I am not law enforcement, never been law enforcement. I'm not military, never been military. And I am not, uh, medically trained in anything else other than your basic first aid as in safe land stuff. Like putting on size and SCBAs, uh, carrying someone crosswind, uh, not downwind from H2S, basic stuff, right? Basic, your basic oil field stuff. Um, that's mainly what I've been in, oil field related. Now, I've had to carry a gun professionally before, things like that, but again, never in a law enforcement capacity. So, let me, <clears throat> let me break that up. Now, another disclosure. Um, I don't work for anybody that I'm going to speak about. Uh, I'm going to be covering Refuge Medical, their training, and their trainers, okay? So, other than your basic training for, like, your, you know, I guess I call it your bare minimum training that you get, you know, workplace training for the oil field and things like that, uh, I've not received any professional training, right? And I'm not going to use air quotes for professional. I mean, after taking this class... Professional is the word to use. All right. So I believe those should be all of the disclosures. These are my opinions on what the class is about and what happened. Um, now, that, that covers me. Disclosure for those that are not familiar with Refuge Medical or their training. Um, I will be probably posting a few links down below. Now, since I'm at work, my gear is actually in my, uh, in my truck. And I'm not going to have time to run and grab that and finish filming this. I didn't prep anything. I just literally, I'm doing it off the cuff, right? Okay. So, my interpretation of what happened and my processing of the events are going to be what I'm going to cover. Um, I'm not part of the disclosure when I'm speaking of these uh, different events. I'm not going to get specific because they're intellectual properties that they use their ideas, in other words, um, are theirs. And I have not found anything online discussing those. And it, I get the vibe, it's like Fight Club. When you're in Fight Club, you don't talk about Fight Club, right? So don't take it as, okay, guys, uh, this, this place is really great, and they paid me some money, so take my word for it. Nobody's paying me. This is 100%. My decision to pay fourteen hundred bucks, or pretty close to fourteen hundred dollars, for two for a two day event with three courses in it. Okay, so this was my my money that I put into this, and at no point is am I going to discuss anything specific. I will be very vague. So if you're looking for, hey, I want to do responder three, I want to know what happens. Well, you will find out when you take it. Uh, responder 2, what happens? Well, again, you'll find out when you take it. Responder 1, I will speak a little bit more on because it is your very base level. And it is not one of the... When you go online and you check their descriptions of their courses, they give you a pretty good idea. Now, I'm going to discuss all of the things that I think that were great and some of the things that I didn't really have issues with, but I will put out there for people that plan on taking the course... Um, for you to think about more, a little bit of advice, okay? Um, responder one, I'm gonna run through these, right? Responder one is gonna be your basic overview of, hey, um, people die and dying is a process. You can stop that process or press the pause button on it and keep people from dying as quickly as they normally would. You're, you're gonna go through the Marchi algorithm, you know, your massive bleeding, your airway, your, uh, respiration being able of course being able to breathe um 
your circulation, your head trauma, and then everything else. All right, in a trauma capability, this is guerrilla style training. And what I mean by that is, this is, the vibe that I got was, this is not like a clinical, okay guys, uh, we are in a, in, a, in a hospital, in a clean room, and this is how we handle this. It's not like that at all. It's, hey, um, somebody in this classroom got hurt and uh, in wood shop, and they, you know, they injured themselves with a power tool. Or, hey, you come across a, a car wreck and somebody's, you know, and injured pretty severely. There's a piece of, uh, the A-pillar is now going through their shoulder or something. Uh, you know, you're you're trying to render aid on the spot. All right. Your responder one doesn't cover anything like that specifically other than the backbone of the march algorithm, which is massive bleeding. That They do cover the other, the other uh, items as well, but... They, the main focus is bleeding because roughly three quarters, um, I don't have the numbers exactly on hand, but I believe right around three, quarter, three quarters of preventable death is because of massive bleeding. So the backbone of that is your blood that you need to keep in your body, right? Because um, spilling it all over the ground is probably a bad idea. <laughs> so the backbone and, and the backbone of, of preventing bleeding to death is going to be your tourniquet. They use a cat gen seven tourniquet. Um, you may also use different gens, but they're cat tourniquets. Um, they also discuss the soft T tourniquet, which Refuge Medical does offer and does have for sale at their website, along with the, uh, the new cats that they sell as well. Um, and these are all certified. These are well, T triple C certified. They're, these are the, the committee on these College of Surgeons and all these guys get together and they look at this equipment and they realize these work and these don't. These are good, these are not. These processes work, these don't. These guys, these very smart guys that have a huge cross section from everything from military application to civilian um, casualties, right, on both sides. And they, they conglomerate and they bring all this data together and realize the best way to save lives in any situation is these things, right? Okay. So you get your you get your cat tourniquet. That's what they trained us on. You will be doing lots of reps with these. You will be practicing applying one to yourself one-handed because your cat tourniquets or your soft tourniquets need to be to be compliant with this. You need to be able to put them on with one hand for the fact that if let's say you're you're in wood shop and you happen to lose your hand or part of it or you lose function in it because you cut something in here and now you're bleeding everywhere. You throw your tourniquet on, you, you cinch it down, you get your windlass, you lock it up, you pull everything through. You have bought yourself some time to get to the hospital. You've bought yourself time for EMTs to show up, whatever the case, right? You're in the middle of the woods cutting down trees and uh, chainsaw slips and you hit yourself in the leg. Same thing. Slip your tourniquet on, tighten it up, throw you in the back of the pickup, and somebody's going to haul ass to the nearest hospital, right? So... But really, the number one thing we deal with in America is, like pretty much anywhere in the world, is car accidents. We've kind of become desensitized to it because on TV, like, oh, you know, 10 died in a car pile up, you know, whatever on this interstate. And you're like, yeah, that sucks. But what we hear mostly is active shooters and things like that. That will be covered, but um, I'm not going to get too deep into that. The responder one just covers your basics, mainly your bleeding. Applying tourniquets so on um responder one is usually about four hours five hours responder two is about the same about four or five hours um i don't have the prices on hand but again i'll put a link to the website down below you can figure that out responder two is responder one on steroids responder one anybody can take uh, responder two you now begin to get into some basic training and i don't mean just training as in uh all right, guys, we've put on tourniquets. Now we're going to put on chest seals. Now we're going to put on this. Now we're going to put on that. You will do that, but you will do other things on top of that. They will add more stress to you. The more, the deeper you go into the responder numbers, one is very basic. They, they will get you stress up. They will push you to your limit when you are, you're learning to walk, right? You, you're going from crawling to walking. You're learning to walk. Responder two is, now they're making you walk very quickly and you are starting to stumble and fall and they're trying to help you with this. Your training wheels are still kind of there, but not really. 
Responder 3 is a full sprint. A lot of people have that idea of it's an easy class. You're going to sit here and get on a PowerPoint. No, you're not. If you expect to show up in your slacks and, you know, your button shirt and drink some coffee, and you may have an opportunity to do that like once or twice. And then you get a lunch and then, no. After that, no. Responder 2, Responder 3. Prepare to be active. Prepare to move a lot. Prepare to be under a lot of stress. Prepare to be forced to question things. All right? Be aware of what's going on. This is a very decent primer without giving anything away. I'm going to tell you this because I went into it completely blind. I was super hyped up that they had something inside of Texas that I could reach within uh, a decent amount of time. So I was like, cool, it's on the other side, you know, kind of eastern, central eastern Texas. I'll head that way and take this training, learn what I can and bring it back to the crew here to the tribe out in the desert all right so i did that so as i'm cruising out there i'm like maybe i should probably look into what i'm getting into i'm not entirely sure what these guys do i don't know anything about it i went in here completely blind if you're doing the same thing which if, you're probably not because you're looking at the video now i'm going to tell you right now it's may seem a little bit a little bit overwhelming Right, and when you watch some of the Responder Three trailers, <laughs> that's basically what they are. They're fucking trailers to like a a movie. You're like, oh, this looks cool. I'm hyped up, but I at the same time I'm kind of anxious. I don't know what I'm gonna do. All right, um, that's kind of how I felt after I watched it. I was like, what? What did I just sign? <laughs> what did I sign myself up for? Well, I paid the money and I've got the hotel and I'm I'm on the road. Came came back out now. Put my name on the dotted line. You gotta, gotta commit, right? That's one thing I'm not afraid of is commitment. So here I am. Responder two is a little bit more active. Uh, the stress levels will be higher. Again, you're learning to walk, so you will apply tourniquets to yourself, to other people. You will have um, the instructors there. You will have a. Uh, our instructors were great at coaching. But few of them will play devil's advocate. A few of them will have you questioning, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? Oh, I'll put a tourniquet on this leg. Do you really need to put one there? Is it high enough? Is it tight enough? Did you move it where it needs to be? Are you sure you can't just pack it? They will ask questions and they're not wrong on, a, on all of these things. Some, sometimes you're doing the exact thing the textbook answer. But they're gonna make you question it because they wanna see if you're absorbing the information. By the end of responder one, you will be confident enough at least i was you will be confident enough to put on your tourniquets without thinking about it stage your tourniquets without paying attention second just second hand um then be able to explain it to other people all right responder two the exact same thing under more distress under shorter periods of time to apply it under the stress i can't explain enough right uh you will be running so if you have uh physical issues, maybe uh, you're not fully able in certain things, the instructors will work with you on that. Um, at least in our class, we, we didn't really have any issues with that. All of us, all of us were men about it. You, uh, you have the possibility of getting injured um, like anybody else. So try to do some running, try to do some push-ups, do some sit-ups, basic stuff. Try to be relatively, I don't mean to say you, to be in shape, but what I mean is, is get your body ready for it. Be ready to be active. Uh, Responder 3 is a dead sprint, right? It is like you start day one, you hit the ground running. You know, that's what you do. So Responder 1 and 2 take place day one, right? Be ready to just jump in and follow follow the instructor's lead. Uh, make sure that you are paying attention. You can take notes, but... Uh, to be honest, most of what you're doing, you should be able to just remember. Um, but if you want statistics or specific things like that, you can have a chance to write that down. Uh, but Responder 2, it's going to be more difficult to do. Responder 3, just go ahead and forget about it. Like, don't, don't even worry about it. All right. So before you show up to any of these classes, the first thing I'm going to tell you is this. 
um, before you sign up for it, watch the trailers. Um, they've got tons of information you can watch on as to what you're going to be doing. <laughs> Try to prep yourself for it mentally, right? It's not going to be that big a deal. I went in completely blind and still made it through all of it, right? I still got all my fingers and toes. They all work mostly, so I'm good. <laughs> it's fine. All right, so um, we, uh, if age is an issue, don't let that hold you back. In our class, we had a few gentlemen that were, they were over 50, and they made it. Granted, we all struggled. Every one of us struggled with something in the class. You're not going to go in there. Maybe, maybe you're one of those guys that you just go in and, you blow past everybody because you're just that great. You know, you're like a, a seal or a beret or something. Or you're just, you know, just some sort of PT god. Cool. But you also have to be smart. You also have to work as a team and you can't outrun everybody. You have to understand that we move together. So your role may be more prominent and the things you do may be more, not wouldn't say neutered, but they may be a little less than what you would want or what you think you're going to do because you're going to have a an idea in your head of it's going to go this way we're going to do this and, and i'm going to react this way throw all that out of the window because most people that have that they don't do that <laughs> the the scenarios in your head it may be the same as what they do i don't know maybe they give you the same scenario maybe they change them up every time but for mine i didn't have any thoughts i literally took my ego and everything that I knew besides basics on how to walk and talk, right? Like I meant to say, I, I put all of that stuff and I left it at the gate. When I showed up into this facility, I said, I'm not going to ask too many more questions other than what pertains to the training. I want to absorb as much that I, as I can in this classroom setting, which I didn't know there's physical stuff, but get to that. And I'm, I'm not going to, uh, I'm going to have my wits about me, but I'm not going to bring anything that I think I know or I, I learned from somewhere online or from other people or whatever. I'm not going to bring any of that with me here. I'm going to leave that at the gate because I, I want to come in here with fresh eyes. So the first recommendation is pretty simple. Do a little bit of exercise. Second recommendation for day one and two, if you're taking responder one class, you should be all right. Responder two class. Do not wear any clothes that you care about. Responder three, do not wear any clothes you care about. Don't show up in a nice polo. Don't show up in fancy stuff. Don't show up in penny loafers. Show up in active gear that you would wear on the street. Some denim jeans and a t-shirt, right? That's what I wore. Most of us wore that. I think we had one guy um, who was uh, once an active Marine, but once Marine, always Marine. Who, Anyways, um, he, he brought some of his, his uh, I think he was wearing fatigues, I guess. So whatever it is that you feel you're going to be wearing on a day-to-day -day basis, if something happens, probably be a good idea to train in it. So just make sure that they're like an old pair of jeans that are comfortable, that you don't care if they get maybe a little bit damaged or a little bit worn. Uh, same for your footwear. Um, tennis shoes are great, but when we did it in Waco, Texas, there's a lot of rain there. And there are a lot of events that happen to you for you to get wet and get dirty and get muddy and other things. And it's hard to run and stop on a dime when your feet are wet. So maybe get some uh, maybe get some hiking boots. I did it in tennis shoes both days. So and I made it. You know, I'm just saying, it might be a good idea. Bring extra pairs of socks. Bring extra um, basic foot care. Make sure you you have that stuff with you. So when you go back to the hotel. You can, you're going to, obviously you're going to shower when you're done with this, but just so you can help prepare yourself for responder three for day two, right? Um, they don't tell you that. So that's a minor nitpick that I have for, for that part of the, their online description. They don't necessarily tell you what you're getting into directly. So, um, so get some physical fitness some physical training in before you go, uh, wear some clothes you don't care about. And uh, I guess the the other thing would be for your lunch, right? You do usually get a lunch hour. Uh, responder one, you're not there long enough for lunch. Once your class is over, you leave. If you're going to stay and you're going to take all three courses, responder one and two, there's a break in the middle that when responder one leaves, you take your lunch. You have about an hour and then responder two starts. 
there's probably not a lot of places you can go eat when you are there in Waco, Texas. This is what I'm covering mostly because that's where I was. Uh, bring your lunch. I packed, I ate two sandwiches. I ate a, like a turkey sandwich and a PB&J sandwich. That's, that's what I had for the whole day. Okay. You're responsible for your own food and your own drinks. Drinks are their own separate category here. I showed up with a nice chest full of cold waters, right? And I didn't know if anybody else maybe forgot to bring anything to drink or maybe the class was going to be more intense than I thought and I wanted to have some cold water available. I packed a nice chest and I, it was free for everybody. I told everybody, if you want something to drink, man, here's water, right? Uh, you're probably going to need more than water. Pack some Gatorades. Um, and if you can get some liquid IVs or rehydration salts, pack those. Drink those because Responder 2 is not going to be... If you're a very active person, it's not going to be that big of a test on you. But Responder 3 may be. Responder 3 may be because when you take the, the Essential Responder course, which is all three of them, um, they're 11 hours total per day. Uh, I say 11 because we got there early. My class did. We took a shorter lunch and we stayed late both days. So yours may be different, but in my experience, that's what we did. Supposed to be 10 hour days, we did roughly 11 hours both days, and uh, nobody complained. We all just we got through it right, extra time, extra training, extra practice, and I'm grateful for that. Our instructors are very, very much on point, um, they were very, uh, they were fucking awesome. Uh, I'm not gonna cover the instructors until the end because I believe that uh, uh, there's it's not that there's not a point to do it, but if I give my review and the instructors that you get may be so different. You may have a different set of people or just a, a few of the people I'm talking about. It's not going to matter. The instructors we got, they were awesome. That's that's blanket statement. They were, they were all great. And they are subversive. <laughs> every one of them. Every one of them is great in keeping you on your toes, right? That's what I mean by that. So in terms of being serious for your training, yes. They're going to do some behind the scenes type of uh, mental games with you. All right. Um, I can't say anything more than that. And I will not say anything more than that. So you will get a little taste of some boot camp for Responder 3. This is what's going to happen. You're getting your PT in. Don't expect to stay clean. You're going to get some PT. You're going to sweat. And you're probably going to bleed. They're going to tell you to wear long sleeve shirts. Your elbows will tell you if you wore long sleeves or not. I did not. All right. Um, they tell you to wear long sleeves. You can if you want. I didn't. And most of us didn't. And we made it just fine. So if you're taking this in Indiana or somewhere else where the ground is terrible, probably should wear some long sleeves. So it's up to you, your discretion. Um, I don't really have any nitpicks other than them not explaining what you should wear, um, maybe giving like a little bit of a guideline for clothing. And when you take your lunch, they say bring your own food. They don't really tell you what what options you have, but where you're going, and you may have options. Where we were, it would take 30 minutes just to get to town before you even order your food. So we just we all packed the sack of lunch, right? Um, you will drink lots of water. You will need to drink lots of water. Um, watch your feet. Make sure that uh, as best as possible, try to um, walk at a decent pace or move at a decent pace. And uh, tripping and slipping is a real thing. You don't want to hurt yourself. And the trainers are there to push you to make it as real as possible. But at the same time, the trainers do their absolute hardest. They try their best to keep you safe and everybody safe. No one gets hurt, right? And the first thing you're going to learn in that class is you are not allowed to die in class. All right, you will not die in class. Everybody here is, they're fully trained in everything. And it sounds kind of intense because it kind of is intense. Okay, the gear you're going to use, okay, um, you're going to get a package. Your package is your trainer kit. They explain to you on the site what it is. Your trainer kit is pretty top notch. Um, they also don't tell you where to put this gear or when you're going to use it again, or if you'll need it again. They don't tell you anything. So you'll have to figure something out. Either you're going to need this stuff for these three days because you're being trained on it, 
hint, hint. Or you can just leave it laying around and then you can find out what happens as you take the course. So um, that's all I'm gonna say on that. Uh, next section, let's get into, from here on out, responder two and responder three are what I'm going to mostly speak about. And I'm not gonna tell you what happens specifically on either day. They may change it up, it may be different. And not only that, I don't wanna give anything away. So responder two and three, I'm gonna use these interchangeably. Um, there are scenarios. They try to make this as realistic as possible. And again, they have it listed on their website, what they cover, force on force, active shooter, um, physical training. They're gonna smoke you, so get ready for that. <laughs> um, if you suck at running, good luck. If you suck at carrying heavy stuff, good luck. If you suck at working as a team, good luck. And if you suck at paying attention to details, good luck. Everything is gonna be covered. So prepare for that and focus yourself accordingly, right? Um, the scenarios you're gonna be in, that was a kind of a preamble to the scenario. Uh, your scenarios, they will be both individual and team-based. By team-based, I mean everybody in your class is a team. Even if they break you into Alpha and Bravo and Charlie and Delta and everyone else, doesn't matter, you're a team, you work together, you can work together. Right, so you will re respond to force on force. You'll respond to active shooter situations. You'll respond to um, tons of stress, man. You'll probably get gray hair if you don't have any when you're done with this. It, they push you, they keep you right at that red line, and they they let off the throttle just a little before something kicks off. So be prepared. It is intense. When they say it's intense, they fucking mean it. <laughs> and, and I do too. It was, I told the instructors in, in class, I said, I hated every minute of it. And I did because they kept me very uncomfortable physically. And then asked me to walk into a scenario and work through that scenario the best that I could based on what I had been trained on and what I knew at the time. And they will continue to work on these baby steps and build you from being able to put on a tourniquet and you can't stand having it on for 10 seconds to having tourniquets put on somebody else and having to deal with them bitching about it to tourniquets don't bother me anymore to who cares that they hurt to all of these other things. And they build up your confidence and they build up your intuition. And if you don't have a tourniquet on tight enough in your scenario, they will let you know that person will die. And it's, you're the one responding. So not to say it's your fault, but you didn't put on a tourniquet tight enough, bro. So <laughs> they will uh, they will let you know. Um, other people in your class will let you know because if you put it on and they're like, all right, cool, I'm good. No, you're not. No, you're not. I got to get one more turn on this because you're not hurting. I need one more turn. Your thigh is not purple. One more turn. And you will get bruises. All right, just a little heads up. You will get bruises. Mine are just going away after a week. Both on your arms, thighs, I mean, wherever they're putting tourniquets, you're going to get bruised up if you're not used to it. Your arm's going to go numb. It's going to hurt. Your legs are going to hurt. You'll get the Captain Morgan stance because it sucks to put pressure on it. But it's part of the training. It's what you're signing up for. It's what you're paying for. Because in these scenarios, something happens to you. What are you going to do? Are you going to just get shot and lay there and bleed out? That's why you're taking this training, so you can help people. But you can't help somebody unless you help yourself, right? When you're sitting in an airplane and the, the masks drop, and you're like, cool, let me put this one on my kit. No, nope. put yours on first, and then your kit. Because if you pass out in the middle of doing that, now you're both dead, right? So get you first, and then get them. And these are things that you need to learn, and this is what you will be trained on. You'll learn how to walk, because you don't know how to do that. You'll learn to breathe, because you don't know how to do that either. No matter if you're 12 or 70, you don't know how to breathe. <laughs> it, it sounds it sounds like I'm making shit up, but um, it's true. You you are going to learn a lot of things. It, when I say it's boot camp, that's probably the best way I can put it. I mean, there are, there are a lot of other people, when you get on the internet, they're going to say it's, it's a wonderful thing. People are going to hate on it. I don't really care. I'm not coming from what other people say. I'm coming from what I did, what I learned. And what what I walked away with 
to me was not equivalent to the money I spent. I believe I walked away with more than what I paid. I think that I stole from these people at this point because yes, it was smoked. I was smoked. And yes, day one, fuck man. I don't know if I can make day two. How much worse could it get? Well, it got worse. <laughs> Responder three got worse for sure. And I was uncomfortable the whole time. And I was like, how dare you make me stronger? How dare you make me more competent? <laughs> so, you know, it, it was, I said that, but I wasn't, I wasn't serious when I said I hated every minute of it. I meant, what I mean by that is like, uh, it's kind of like a sarcastic compliment. It's like, man, this food was so terrible. Like it was disgusting. That's why, I, that's why I had to clean the plate, man. I didn't want anyone else to have to suffer, you know, you know, it's one of those things. And, um, yeah, we had solid performing dudes in our class. We had just, just great, strong men. I mean, uh, guys that just didn't quit. Right. And rather they were older and had, uh, you know, some medical things, or they were some of the younger cats that were running through there. Didn't matter. We all pushed each other. We all helped each other. We all encouraged each other. The organic leadership and growth that you will camaraderie, you'll build in class get ready for it i mean if you have a decent class with decent people it's going to happen you're going to learn to run the algorithm that they teach you you're going to learn to do the steps and if you do any of them incorrectly people die and you're going to have to deal with that mentally people you love people you know doesn't matter you have to do what you have to do to save that person and sometimes even after you do that, it just doesn't work out. So this touches on more than just physical. Like, hey, we, I learned to put on a tourniquet. I can save lives. I'm perfect. No, you're not. Um, the scenarios I've already kind of breezed through because, again, I don't want to touch on that too deeply. I had a lot of emotional things I had to work through after the class as well. Um it's not that I'm an emotional guy, but there are some hard facts that you have to accept when you think deeply on some of the things being done in these classes. And you have to think deeply on some of these scenarios. Reflect on not just what the scenario is and what happens, but also on yourself. If you're a, the kind of guy that doesn't do self-reflection, you just learn for the moment, then you'll pick up what's in the moment. But if you're one of the guys that you're like, what could I have done different? Fuck, man. Like, you beat yourself up for it for a little while. That's another hurdle. That's part of that that mental block that you have in that class. And they they don't exactly tell you how to get over it. They just tell you you need to, right? And you got plenty of support from everybody there and support from your, your instructors. Things do get and feel a little bit rushed from time to time. But it's because you have a lot of people and we're all trying to climb that ladder at the same time. Some of you may struggle with things more than others. And I, I, I recommend when you're done, build that little community with the people that you do this with, because it's a pretty, pretty good opportunity, man, because you're already meeting a bunch of like-minded people, right? I think it's a pretty good opportunity to build them bridges with other people, whether they're part of your state citizenry or they're part of somewhere else. I mean, we have people from all over the country come to mind. So it, it was awesome. And all the guys that were there were, they were solid dudes, man. Uh, I can't say nothing bad about any of them. I, it was an honor to work with all of them. And it was a privilege to work with the instructors. It was, it was great. Um, I feel like even if things don't go the way I want them to, if an emergency ever happens, if things ever do get sideways, I feel like even if things don't work out like I want them to, I know that I can say for myself that I did my absolute best and they may have went to the other side to wait for us, but it wasn't because I stood around and did nothing. I'm trying to cover 22-ish hours of training in two days and yeah, knowing what I know now, I take a lot of things a lot more serious and uh I, I hope other people do too. Um, 
that's what I, I took away from this class. And there were a lot of other great things that I cannot talk about that happened. And a, a lot of deep understandings, like epiphanies after the class of having like these, these dreams of reliving these scenarios. They're not even really nightmares. They're just like recaps of something similar, but it's crazy because I was so invested in, in what was going on. Um, if you do that too, maybe you process things differently. Maybe I'm just some weirdo, but it impacted me greatly and I'm forever, I'm like going to be forever grateful for it. Right. Uh, that's my heartfelt, honest opinion on it. I don't like, I don't have any notes or I don't have a like talking points or anything. I just, just off the dome and my lunch is already over. So I'm gonna have to get back out there and get back to it, but appreciate y'all. Hopefully this primes the pumps. Hopefully this gets you thinking and at least you have a little bit of an idea of what to, what to kind of do or bring or wear anyway. So see you guys later. True B man. This is Texas. I'm out.